Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning back to Mark 13 again as we've been working our way through the gospel there. But before I read our text, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which is rich and true. And we do just pray that you would help us to have eyes to behold wonderful things in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 13 from verse 24 to 37. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will, earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Well, this is a passage which we've been in for the last few devotions now and it's a passage that often causes us no small amount of trouble does it? it it gets a bit confusing really and it's because of the way Jesus answers the two questions we remember right at the beginning that Jesus is answering two specific questions of the apostles the disciples firstly what will be the sign of the destruction of the temple you remember right in the beginning that Jesus was commenting on the temple because the men were saying, wow, what an amazing temple. Look at these stones. It's all so beautiful. And Jesus said to them, look, a time is coming when every one of those stones will be cast down. And so they had asked, what will be the sign of that? What will that look like? When will it, when will it happen? But then the second question was, what will be the sign of your return and the coming of your kingdom? We see that when we turn to the other gospels. And Jesus answers this. And the difficulty for you and I is that he doesn't answer in, in what we would say is a straightforward manner. If you or I were to answer that, well, firstly, we'd be very confused and lost and we wouldn't be able to answer it. But if we were to answer it, we would probably say, well, the destruction of the temple will work like this. And my return will work like this. That's not how Jesus answers it. He sort of flits back and forth, doesn't he? And we've seen that a bit as we've worked through. And it really gets highlighted in this section before us now. He begins now in our section to talk about his return. Then he talks about the temple. Then he talks about his return. And then he talks about what we are to do while waiting for both. So firstly, look at, look at the way that he directs his focus upon the return of Christ. He says, In those days, after the tribulation, the sun darkened, moon not giving its light, stars falling from heaven, powers in the heavens being shaken. It's very apocalyptic type language that you see in Revelation and Ezekiel and Daniel, etc. And he says, You will see the Son of Man. Or they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he, being the Son of Man, will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. So he looks towards the end and he says, a time is coming, dropping my Bible, a time is coming when I will return. 
And when I will, when I return, listen, when I return, they, not you, but they will see these things. Now that's important. He doesn't say you, and you'll find out why that's important in a minute. But Jesus is saying there is a definite moment in which I will return. He then shifts his focus towards the temple again. And he says, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So what's he talking about? Notice the change of pronouns. It was when they see these things. Now it's when you see these things. And what do you see? You see he coming. Who is the he? The he is the guy who's putting the abomination of desolation in place. You see what's happening here? Jesus shifts the focus. He shifts the focus from his return now back to the temple. And he's reminding them that he is the one warning them so that they need to pay attention. He's giving them the signs of the destruction of the temple so that they can be prepared to leave. Remember, we talked about how God was showing his mercy to his disciples and his people so that they could flee the destruction that would take place. He was saving his church. He was protecting his church. And so he sends them forth with this knowledge so that they would be ready on the day that it takes place. And then he switches focus again. Having said, pay attention, fig tree, my words will come to pass. He then switches the focus back again to his return. But concerning that day, Notice the that day, not, not this day, AD 70, but that day, his return, or that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels, nor the son, but only the father. Now, there's a couple of things we have to engage with there, even though we don't have much time. Firstly, isn't it amazing that on TV programs like First Light, as it's called in New Zealand, there's all these experts who know exactly when Jesus is coming back. I get heaps of comments on YouTube about these things where people tell me that they've worked out who the beast is and who this person is and who that person is and when Jesus is going to return. Yet the angels in heaven don't know. Yet the sun doesn't know. Secondly, we need to engage with that. What does Jesus mean by saying the sun doesn't know? Well, he clearly isn't saying that the second person of the Trinity doesn't know because the second person of the Trinity is God in full deity, and has complete omniscience. He knows everything. He's talking about his humanity. The Son, the human Son, Jesus, doesn't know in his humanity. Of course his divine person knows, his, divi his divinity knows, but his humanity doesn't know. So don't get confused with that. But notice Notice most of them, most importantly, the application of this entire chapter. It's so easy for us to get bogged down with all of the crazy talk and then spend all our time trying to figure out the signs. But do you notice the application is not work out when I'm returning or work out when the temple's happening? No, the application is be awake, be ready. So this 33. Be on guard. Keep awake. You do not know when, it, when the time will come. Verse 37. What I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. And then he has that beautiful little parable there, doesn't he? It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening or in the morning? In the midnight, no one knows, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. What's the purpose? What's the application of the teaching of Jesus in Mark 13? Be ready. Be ready. Look, it matters little if you have an expert understanding of the book of Revelation and an expert understanding of Mark 13 and Daniel and Ezekiel and everything else. 
and yet you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ. The most important thing is that you are awake, prepared, ready for Christ to return. That when he comes back, you won't be caught by surprise, but you'll say, I've been doing my work. It's interesting, isn't it? Jesus says, The man puts his servants in charge, each with his work. You have work to do. I have work to do. Let's not focus upon everything else. Let each of us focus upon the work that Christ has given us and labor in it. Ready and awake and watching for the return of Christ. There is a day coming. Will you be found sleeping? Or will you be found awake? That's the exhortation from this passage. Not how well you know the end times, but how well you live in the present. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this wonderful teaching of Christ. And we do acknowledge we often get distracted. Help us to concentrate, Lord, and to stay awake and to work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you back here tomorrow afternoon.